Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is pastrami versus corned beef. Pastrami and corned beef, corned beef and pastrami, they're two very similar beef cuts. Well, similar up to a point and then very different at another point. Uh, traditionally, you're gonna see that pastrami is made out of, oh, brisket flat or the fatty part of the brisket or the navel or the deckle, there's a lot of different ones, whereas corned beef is typically a lean brisket uh, cut of meat. Now, for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that lean cut of brisket on both, because it'll give us a really nice side-by-side -side comparison, and honestly, that's how I like to cook either one of these when I'm going for sliced pastrami or sliced corned beef. So I'm gonna walk you through how to trim that out of a whole brisket. We'll go through the brining process, seasoning, cooking, and that'll give us a really nice side-by-side -side comparison so that we can contrast what's different and also see the similarities of the two finished products. So here we have our whole brisket. This is from Creekstone Farms. Uh, so what you've got here is you've got two muscles. You've got the point that sits on top and the flat or the lean meat that sits underneath. You can see the separation between the two right here and how that's got less marbling than that. This is the muscle that we're trying to target today. So we're gonna separate these out and trim this out as well, uh, just to get a small fat cap on top and uh, just kind of round up any other things that need to be trimmed out. I'm gonna start by taking most of the fat off this point meat so I can see exactly where the muscle is and that's gonna help me make the separation. We'll work our way down here toward the lean meat or the flat. And then somewhere right in this area is where this muscle is going to end and we can peel it back and separate the two out. You can see my brisket's partially frozen this morning, which actually is gonna help with the trimming a little bit. It's not on purpose, the fridge just got too cold. So you see where that line is. We've now hit that spot where we can start to peel away that muscle that's on top. We're just gonna stay in that line of fat that runs right in between the two all the way until it's separated. Now we've got these separated, we've got this nice big flat muscle that I'm just gonna clean up a bit. I'm gonna take this fat cap down to about half an inch and clean up any of the stuff around the edges. Uh, this is gonna burn up when we go to smoke this thing for pastrami. Um, not so important, I guess, if you're doing a corned beef with this because um, the edges, while they will kind of cook faster than everything else, they're not going to crunch up quite as much as they would as a pastrami. But it's still nice to get it all nice and clean. So this is fully cleaned up now. The next thing we gotta do is we've gotta get it into brine. And it's gonna need a good seven to 10 days for that brine to fully penetrate all the way to the middle of this meat. So you get that beautiful red pink color that you associate with pastrami and corned beef. Now the great thing about the brine is up to this point, we're still making these exactly the same. We're gonna use the same brine for both the pastrami and the corned beef. Now before we can actually build the brine, we've gotta build our pickling spice, which is a large part of the flavor of the brine. And this is all equal portions over here. I'm doing a four gallon batch, so uh, this is double what you would need if you're doing a single brisket. But I'm starting with two tablespoons of telecherry black peppercorns, same amount of red chili flakes, whole cloves, all spice berries, mustard seeds, and coriander. Then we've got a couple more things in smaller quantities here, two teaspoons of ground ginger, two teaspoons of ground mace, uh, which if you have trouble finding that, you could throw nutmeg in there instead. We've got four bay leaves. We're just gonna crush these up before we throw them in there. And then a couple small cinnamon sticks. We also wanna crush those. Give that a good shake to mix everything around. And now we'll move on to brine. Like I said, we're making a four gallon batch, but we're only gonna put two gallons of water into our stock pot here to make the brine. The other two gallons will come in the form of ice so that we can cool this down immediately and use it right away. We're gonna add to the water three cups of kosher salt. Again, this is a double batch. If you're just making one brisket, you can cut this in half. So we've got two cups of sugar. 20 cloves of garlic that have just been crushed. You can leave the skin on, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna throw in a half cup 
of our pickling spice. And then three tablespoons of LEM Cure. This is pink curing salt. And it's what gives your brisket, uh, whether it's corned beef or pastrami, that nice red color. So we're gonna throw this on the turkey fryer burner, bring it up to a simmer, and then we'll be ready to cool it down with some ice. We let this thing come up to a boil. It's been doing this for a few minutes now, so all of those aromas are waking up. It smells incredible right now, but we're ready to cool this down with an ice bath so that we can uh, well, really, we're gonna dilute it with ice so we can get our brisket in here. So equal amounts water and ice here by, by weight. It's probably gonna make a little bit more than what we need, but I'd rather have more than what we need than less, obviously. We're just gonna stir this for a minute until all of the ice is melted. Now we're ready to throw in our briskets. If this is going to overflow, we might have to take just a little bit of that wa that brine solution out. Real close. Take just a touch out. You want to make sure those are fully submerged. So we're using the briner bucket. We'll lock that plate in place. And this is going into the fridge at least seven days. Ten is even better. So I've got a couple of briskets here that have been brining for nine days now. We're gonna turn one into corned beef and one into pastrami. So this is where things start to look a little bit different because our pastrami here, we're gonna coat this in coriander seeds and black pepper and then get it on the smoker. Whereas over here on our corned beef, this is going to get boiled along with some onions, carrots, some aromatics and some more of that pickling spice. Now it probably comes as no surprise to you that being that we do all outdoor cooking, smoking and grilling, the pastrami has far more appeal to me right off the bat. I love that smoke flavor of the pastrami. Uh, but I will say one of the advantages that your corned beef has over the pastrami is it's gonna cook faster. Uh, these two pieces of meat, I'm probably gonna smoke the pastrami overnight. In fact, I know I'm going to because I did that last night. We're gonna see how that's riding here in a little bit. Um, although we'll go through the whole process. So that's gonna be a long cook. I mean minimum probably eight hours uh, or you can stretch it out go low and slow for 12 14 16 hours uh, it all just depends on where you set your temperature that corned beef probably going to get done in about two to three hours uh, boiling away so automatically it's got that time advantage but that's why we started our brisket last night so we can finish these at roughly the same time the corned beef's going to go into our turkey frying pot we're going to add to that about four cups of onion couple cups of carrot, couple cups of celery, and then a quarter cup of that pickling spice that we used in the brine. Now I'm just gonna make sure I get this covered, we'll probably bring it up, you know, a few inches above where the actual meat is, and then we're gonna get this on the turkey fryer burner. Now for the pastrami, I wanna, wanna actually rinse this off because there's a lot of salt on the surface of it. I'm not so worried about that with the corned beef since it's gonna be completely submerged in fresh water. But this one, I don't want it to be too salty on the outside. It's already salty all the way on the inside. So we're gonna rinse that excess salt off before we season it. Now we wanna get this seasoned up with our coriander, a quarter cup of that and a quarter cup of black pepper. But before we do that, we're gonna to toast these off to really open up some of the aromas and flavors. So dry skillet over medium heat. We're gonna toast the coriander by itself first because it goes a bit faster than the black pepper. Just let that take on a little bit of heat. We're gonna move it here and there. I'm gonna make sure we don't scorch anything. So we're gonna be smelling for when it starts to get aromatic. It's just gonna take probably a minute or so. Yep, starting to get that aroma. There's just the faintest hint of smoke. Don't want any smoke. So we're gonna take these off right now. Now we'll do the same thing with the black peppercorns. We just expect it to take a couple minutes longer. It took about a minute longer, but yeah, it's, and it's almost, it's floral or fruity, uh, but you can really smell when they're toasted. So I'm gonna transfer these to my spice grinder. 
We can break them down a bit. We don't want this in a dust. I want it to be plenty chunky, but we do need it to get broken up a bit. Still have some big chunks, especially from the peppercorns, but that's a nice coarse consistency. We're gonna use a little bit of our market mustard to bind our seasonings to our brisket. A Dijon or something like that would be nice too. Just a fairly thin layer all, or all over the surface. And then we're gonna take our coriander and black pepper and sprinkle it over the surface. So you'll notice no salt. Again, all of the salt's in the brine, and that salt has already worked its way into the middle of what's going to be our pastrami. So there's no need to add any more to it. So at this point, this is ready to go onto the smoker. Today we're smoking on the Yoder Smokers YS480S pellet grill. It's the smaller of the two that you normally see me cooking on. Right now it's running at 250 degrees, but I actually put this brisket on last night, the pastrami I should say. I uh, put it on before bed, let it smoke at 190 degrees overnight, just so it soaks up all of that smoke flavor. And then when you wake up in the morning, bump that up to 250 and wait for that bark to set, which I'm about to show you right now. And then we're ready to wrap. So we're kind of getting the full process condensed really quick here. So this internal temperature is about 165 right now, which is a good time to you know go ahead and wrap this. But you'll also just notice like great bark formed on the outside, beautiful color. Um, those are the indicators that we're looking for before we wrap. You want to have a nice bark set and you want to have that internal temperature up 160 to 170. This guy right here is just about to start his journey and will certainly be pastrami by tomorrow. We're going to throw our pastrami down on two sheets of heavy duty foil, make sure we have no leaks and wrap it up as tight as possible. And this is going back on the smoker until it's probe tender or around 203 to 205 degrees internal. Now back to our corned beef, ready to add our water and get this thing boiling away. You give it plenty of room in there. That's probably about two gallons, maybe a little less. So we'll bump that up to high heat to start out and then turn it down to let it simmer away. So this guy's been on for a couple of hours now. It's feeling really tender, so I want to show you what I'm seeing here. Oh. oh, that smells incredible. So this isn't going to be quite as tender as, say, like a regular brisket flat because of the actual curing that went on. Um, but we can see that this is up over 205 now. So we want to go ahead and get this pulled off and ready to rest. Our corned beef has now been on for a little more than two hours. Ooh, it's got a nice jiggle to it. Let's get a temp on it. Popped right up to that 205 mark. So we're gonna call this good. Wrap it up in some foil and let it rest in a cooler or warm place for about an hour. All right, here they are, fully rested now. Get your corned beef and your pastrami. I can definitely say one looks more appetizing than the other. Let's get a taste. So these are still hot, but these are definitely meats that you could cool down and, you know, slice nice and thin for sandwiches. It's got a great pink color to it. Um, you know, pulled this one at about 205, so it'll hang. Um, if you want a little bit more structure to it, if you're gonna, you know, cold cut this, you can cook it, cook it a little bit less, but it's got a nice pull apart to it. Let's look at the uh, pastrami here. So we're pink all the way to the center, which means we gave our pink salt enough time. It sat in the brine long enough to penetrate all the way to the center. Nice cook on that one too. Good dangle to it, but also gonna pull apart real easy. Nice little snap. Yeah, that'll be some pastrami. 
Let's try this corned beef. So with the exception of the outside, they look real similar. It's hard to spot a smoke ring on something that's this pink already. The brine flavor is there, but the texture is definitely chewier, tougher. And of course you don't get any smokiness to it. I'm kind of tasting what we essentially built a beef, beef broth that this was being simmered in. I can kind of taste that. It tastes like brothy to me from the mirepoix that was added. I mean, this, you know, you've got the same amount of fat on it, but then you've got that crust on top. And man, that crust on top is everything. So much more texture to it. I love the black pepper. I love the coriander. I love the smoke. I mean, to me, hands down, pastrami is the winner if this is a battle. But there's nothing wrong with that corned beef either. There's nothing wrong with this corned beef. In fact, you know, throwing in a skillet for a corned beef hash, you can add a lot of flavor. In fact, there is a lot of room to add even more flavor, even though it's got a lot of flavor inside. I mean, just looking at these slices side by side, though, as soon as I slice into the pastrami, I see the fat on the surface and that juiciness. I don't see it as much in the corned beef. It's definitely there. It's got a shimmer. Uh, and the texture has definitely got more chew to it. Not, not that it's chewy, but it's got more texture to it. Whereas the pastrami wants to just kind of melt in your mouth. Interestingly, you can see from the foil it was rested in. Pastrami, you know, it cooked in this foil for quite a while. So there's a lot of that fat that rendered out essentially basting itself in its own fat as it cooks. And of course, this is just a little bit of fat and liquid that ran off of the corned beef while it was resting. So there's not much to see there. Lots of flavor in this too. I think that helps to kind of pump more flavor into the pastrami versus the slightly lighter flavored corned beef. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.